Well, the stage is set here on Teesside with many excited about the prospect of seeing Middlesbrough in action again after the weekend, albeit Middlesbrough and Preston both suffering defeats a few days ago. So perhaps Sam Parkin alongside me in the commentary box tonight. It's all about recovery for these two sides. Yeah, I think very much that and finding some much needed consistency. They've had similar seasons, really, if you think. Brilliant runs, treacherous runs, and, and now both in a little inconsistent spell. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what they're searching for. I think very evenly matched sides. I think the four points that separates them in the division shows that. Um, so we'll see who comes out on top. They need to start going on a winning run if they've got any aspirations of making that playoff mid. Thanks. Over a third of the way through the season and the championship standings remain tight and tense. The top two and bottom few are out on their own a little, but the rest of the division is ever-changing game by game. A good weekend, you saw at the table, a bad week and you're on the floor. For context, Millwall in 18th are only eight points off sixth placed Preston. But then again, that's the championship. To the teams. Michael Carrick has shuffled his pack tonight with some changes in force and others for freshness. Hayden Hackney and Dale Fry are injured. Lucas Engel is not involved and Sam Greenwood drops to the bench. There are rare starts for Anthony Dyke Steele and Alex Bangura at the back with Dan Barlasser and Morgan Rogers slotting into midfield. Emmanuel Latilaf leads the line, looking to add to his two championship goals so far. Preston North End would be forgiven if they were still coming to terms with their last gasp defeat against Cardiff on Saturday, having conceded twice deep into added time. Four players step up from the weekend's bench tonight. Will Keane, Ryan Ledson, Mads Brokjaer and Andrew Hughes, who came on last time out having missed the previous seven games. Alan Brown, Dwayne Holmes and Chet Evans move to the dugout. Robbie Brady is suspended after his Saturday red card. Well, the two managers have done all they can in terms of passing words on to their troops. It's about how these players can take to the field and what they can do. We would expect a tight game between these two sides who both have similar ambitions. And two relatively young managers looking to impose their styles on each other. The two sides will shortly go into action, but before that, an opportunity to reflect. indeed been a lot of love around the football world for Terry Venables who sadly passed away recently at the age of 80 and we send our best wishes of course to his family and friends and these two sides now turn their attention to the battle for points well, who knows exactly how many playoff or promotion contenders we have in the championship at the moment with such congestion throughout the table it's easy to make rash predictions and be made to look quite daft come may but preston north end refused to go away and middlesbrough should be dismissed at your own risk both of these teams look set to be part of the thrills and spills as the season progresses time will tell whether they are truly in the promotion conversation 
Both are set and ready to go. Andrew Kitchen is the man in the middle, as he was for Middlesbrough's 2-0 defeat here against Stoke City at the end of last month. There are only four points between these two sides at kickoff. Both sides have had their highs and lows this season already. Winning streaks have been enjoyed, slumps in form endured. And having suffered frustrating defeats at the weekend, both will be keen to get back on track and right back in the mix at the top of the championship tonight. Interesting to see how these two sides settle tonight, Sam, and also with some of those coming in with not that many minutes under their belt this season, particularly Anthony Dykesteel and Alex Bangur in the two fullback positions. Yeah, they're a little patched up, that's for certain. Middlesbrough, they've been hit in that area by injuries, substantial injuries as well. Tommy Smith's going to miss the season, Lenahan as well, so um, it needs must really for Michael Carrick tonight, and I think you can see from the the lineup of press, and this is an attacking side that Ryan Lowe's put out tonight. And here come Middlesbrough, who very nearly profited from a bit of miscommunication and also a slip at the back from Freddie Woodman. The ball tucked away for a corner to the hosts. That's a lap, just trying to be released behind that Preston back line, but decent intervention, but an early set piece opportunity for the home side. One for Dan Barlasser to take. on defensive duty for press the north end here until I try to make it his and Gura taking no chances and back he goes to Seni Dieng Middlesbrough side looking to hit the ground running here having won just one of the last four league games they had won the previous six been a season for the home side which has been a bit patchy in terms of good results then not so good results then trying to get back onto the curve of form so defensive work for Beck still to do here which he does well just getting in there ahead of best who is pushed forward tonight with Andrew Hughes back in the ranks yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they, they get on down that side. I think it's been a bit of a problem position for Preston over a number of seasons, and obviously the players have been rotated in that position so far this campaign. Best getting the nod tonight, and obviously Hughes being reunited with Story and Lindsay, formidable back three as they were for such large portions of last year. That will give Ryan Lowe much-needed security in a spell where they've been conceding maybe too many goals, and... Uh, Best, I'm sure, will give them a bit of athleticism down the left hand side, which you'll need to do because Dyke still is an incredible athlete on that flank for Middlesbrough. Big season for Kean Best already. Ten appearances, tonight being number 11. The only senior appearances of his career. Here's Will Keen back in the side tonight to Brad Cox, who's played every minute of the championship campaign. Field freshened up for Preston tonight as well with Brown and Holmes only on the bench. Story back to Woodman. Just caught. Yeah, I think Bangura just uh, felt that little shove and made sure that the officials gave the decision. Back towards his own goal. Interesting to see Keane and Fokia look like they're both playing as number 10, so. Yeah, attacking lineup, but kind of got that box midfield to probably try and control that area of the pitch. Because Majic looks to have been a, an excellent addition. He's going to be up there by himself, but two technically and attack-minded players just off him. Them a real goal threat, I believe tonight. Just saw Michael Carrick there. His first game as Middlesbrough head coach was against Preston North End at Deepdale. It was a game which Preston won by two goals to one. of last year. 
Morris, he came in. And Middlesbrough all of a sudden marched up the table. Back by Hughes to Woodman. That battle we just saw moments ago from Potts and Bangura might be interesting tonight. It's only Bangura's second start in the championship this season after a nasty hamstring injury on his debut. Potts has really made this position his own on the right-hand side for Preston North End. He was a midfielder by trade, wasn't he, many years ago, but Ryan Lowe's picked him in his position consistently, chips in with the odd goal, gives them the balance, maybe not the most attacking of wing-backs you're going to see, but it's a real steady job for Ryan Lowe and his team. And they've never lost when he scored, so he's a bit of a good luck charm as well in that regard. 16 games in which he's hit the back of the net, 14 wins and two draws. Here's Paddy McNair. Centre half tonight. He's also been at right back this season. Can play in that holding midfield role as well. Rogers slides through the challenges. Matelaf taking it on. Looking for support, which he gets from Crooks. And then it all goes in on the right. Shame because it was a brilliant little bit of initial play. Rogers coming in off the left hand side. That's going to be the, the makeup of their team. Jones will hold the width on the right, but Rogers will come in field and it was good hold up play from Mate Lat. And then Crooks just overcooks his intended pass, but nice stuff there from a couple of the Middlesbrough players in build up. He was on the score sheet last time out for Middlesbrough when they hit two in two minutes, but ultimately fell to a Mark Sykes winner for Bristol City. It is such a difficult division to call at the moment, isn't it? Because teams are taking points off each other right across the board. I think you can see from the very outset here, it's quite cagey. Neither team really being aggressive in the way they're closing down from the front. Just having a little look at each other. Obviously Middlesbrough, a few injuries, multiple changes tonight. Probably not at their strongest. If they can get any form of victory tonight, that would be an excellent result against the Preston side that have had an excellent start to this campaign. It's a Preston side which is an interesting one in terms of how you look at statistics. They've won two of their last three, or two of their last ten. Depends how far you want to go back. Yeah, I mean, the, the run was hellish, wasn't it, after the, the winning streak in terms of the quality of the size they came up against West Brom, Ipswich, Leicester in the space of a week, wasn't it? So you can understand that they lost some games and the form has dipped since then, just the two defeats and six, so I don't think it's as desperate as maybe people from the outside think given the way they started the season. It's still been a pretty formidable start from Ryan Lowe and his players. Just need to kick on again now, but get some players back fit. Still Jakobsen to come. So he will have goals, naturally. And the squad, I, I believe, is the, is the best probably that Ryan Lowe has had during his tenure. And the ball just squirming away as Preston looked to counter. With Matsrukia. Emil Reese has been a big miss this season after the, the goals that he scored in the past. Militinos Mites, though, stepping up of late. Here's Rogers, who was maybe caught in two minds there, certainly wanted a bit more time than he had. His position early part of this game is causing one or two problems for Preston North End. Infield, off the left-hand side, lovely position, great take. And with you, just turned down the opportunity to strike. I thought it was on to let fly with his right foot. Woodman not called into action on that occasion. Pops it on to Story and then Potts. Touch from Keane as well, and Potts goes down. After coming together with Bangura, which looks like it might well have been a painful one for the Preston man. I'm not sure if he's caught there, if it's maybe studs in the turf. Territory, this is left ankle. 
doesn't look to be in too much discomfort now, so hopefully he's going to be able to crack on. Yeah, you're right, looking at that, it was the placement of the foot, wasn't it, more than anything that the Middlesbrough man did. Back to Paddy McNair. Vandenberg and for Dyke Steele. Oh, somehow to slide away from the challenge from Frukia. Both sides just getting into the game, trying to work out how they can best affect things. Potts, seemingly back up to speed after that knock. Whiteman moves it on. Hughes for best. Ledson searching out the front two, but not with any real accuracy. No, they've not been able to work it into the front players as of yet. Plenty of possession amongst the back three, but unable to, to feed it into the front players, into the final third. Middlesbrough, on the other hand, have been quite slick. A couple of passes into the centre forward. Certainly early part of this game looked like... Rodgers is going to be key, that's been an avenue and his position really interesting just in central, almost a starting position like a number 10 alongside Crooks, I don't know whether that's the counteract, Preston North Ends for kind of box midfield, or to take one of those centre-halves in there, George story it would be, definitely he looks to be an outlet for Middlesbrough. It was interesting to note the versatility of some of the players out there. Jordan Story, of course, can play in that holding midfield role himself, and Andrew Hughes is a full-back, so that Preston backline can be quite fluid, can't it? He's got great options. You look, look at the bench as well. Patrick Bauer and Jack Watmore. I mean, there's five excellent centre-half options for him. I mean, no wonder they had that incredible run at the start of last season. Same personnel, in essence, so he's got great options there. It's improving, I think, going forward, that attacking flair that hasn't really been in evidence uh, in the last year, 18 months. So, again, this is a really good squad now, players to come back. I think there's good firepower. So, I think the fans should be optimistic that the fair is going to improve going forward, because I don't think it was great at times last season. It was very much a, a season based on a solid foundation. Rukka here up against Van der Berg. Both want the ball. It goes the way of the hosts. It's interesting chatting to Ryan Lowe because he does sort of say now that this squad is his squad now. He's had time to get his feet under the table, get the right players in, keep hold of the players that he wanted to keep hold of. Shape the squad in his way. So many managers, of course, don't get time to do that. He has bought himself time with the form of his side. They are looking to test Middlesbrough under Michael Carrick. House. Bangura, once again with Potts for company. And that forces the error. There's Majic for Potts again. Will Keane there too. Potts wanted a free kick, which wasn't forthcoming. And now the breakaway. Bangura joining in. Tempting a ball in, but it's too close to Woodman. A yeah, shame again, because the approach play is nice. They've got two excellent passes of the ball in the middle of the pitch tonight. Barlasa probably slightly more so than Johnny Housen, but already they've shown their good quality on the ball, feeding it into the front players. Good pace on the pass, appreciation for the teammates, and just unfortunately breaking down in the final third. McNair, and again.
Bangura. And there for Vandenberg. Sunny Dien getting involved. Bexteel. Crooks. Encouraging McNair forward. Housen. Barnasa. He can strike them from here. Crooks tempting it through. It's a lovely ball. It's a really well crafted Middlesbrough goal. Isaiah Jones opens up the game for Middlesbrough. And with 15 minutes on the board, they make the first clear cut opportunity of the game count. It's a quite brilliant opening goal. I think that is Middlesbrough, the patience within the build-up. Preston have got so many players back behind the ball, but not overawed by that. That's really nice from Barla, so taking players out of the game. Then the timing is absolute perfection, and that, in a nutshell, is Zaya Jones' game. Running towards the opponent's goal, on the shoulder, gets the movement spot on, collects it beautifully, slots it with his other side. Excellent goal. Kind of goal that's lovely to watch, unless you are a follower of Preston North End, of course. A 100th Middlesbrough appearance tonight for Isaiah Jones, and he is on the board with his eighth Middlesbrough goal. First touch, actually, just opened it up, the angle, almost committed the goalkeeper, just showed him that side, and showed great composure to slide it beyond him with his left foot. Beautiful goal, really well executed. The execution in the pass and not the finish it deserved. And the problem here is with Seni Dieng, who a couple of moments ago came a fair way out of his goal, almost playing as an outfield player. He might have tweaked something in the process. Probably the perfect opportunity actually to have a few conversations. You know the old cliche. Teams are often caught cold just after they've scored, so it just gives Middlesbrough an opportunity to just reset probably and focus in on the next couple of minutes after taking the lead with a quite sumptuous team goal. And I guess if you're Preston North End now, you just want to get right back at Middlesbrough and you'd be frustrated to not be able to take kick-off and get on with things. Super finish, though, from Isaiah Jones. Fourth goal of the season for him. My Lord was so disappointed because they're back in their shape. Every player essentially was behind the ball there. And Middlesbrough, like I said, just nice and patient, made little angles, waited for the opportunity to penetrate, and got that final pass and finish spot on. It was a lovely goal. And they have the wind in their sails now all of a sudden. Here is Jones. Looking for Crooks, trying to repay the favour from the goal moments earlier. still unable to take it with him. And that will be a Preston goal kick and a chance for them to take a bit of a breather. But they were disjointed there. They did get caught with players up the pitch, and this is a poor pass, actually. Lindsay half deals with it. Crooks does amazingly well, actually, to get possession after the sliding challenge, and then... Still just leaves the ball behind and a bit of good fortune on Hughes' clearance, but yeah, really good spell for the home side. Preston North End just need to settle. No clean sheet in 13 championship games now. The last time they shut out the opposition was a 2-0 victory at Stoke City at the beginning of September. Middlesbrough are just imposing themselves now. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they haven't gone with an old-fashioned number nine, Josh Coburn, up top tonight. And so far, actually, the intricacy of their play, and playing with a slightly more diminutive centre-forward, it's paid dividends. They're finding it hard, that back three that have been so solid for Preston over the last couple of seasons, actually getting moved around, it's very problematic for them at the moment. 
Palace are looking to distribute. It goes towards the crowd. Now for Crooks. Looking to set it for Rogers. Just ran out of pitch. Clever player, Matt Crooks. Does well actually to take receipt of that bouncing ball. Probably was the right pass as well for the overlapping Rogers, but just unable to connect. In the first ball. Cleanly as well. It's really intelligent hold up play from Crooks. He plays the striker in the past, doesn't he? So he knows that position back to goal. Intelligent midfielder. Just messing with the minds of the Preston defenders there, wasn't he? Started off standing offside. And then just managed to get himself back on to try and feed Rogers. He has scored one championship goal this season, Morgan Rogers. He's never actually scored more than one championship goal in a season. Middlesbrough just enjoying a period of pressure and in which they've certainly concerned Preston North End's back line. As Majic after this ball, best as well as Majic gets there. Just ahead of Jones, who then fights back and wins it back. possession and then just switches off but it's bright defending from Isaiah Jones and another opportunity to get on the pitch I was begging and they're just looking for someone to go on a run someone to get a shot away you know that's 22 minutes in lacking in any kind of threat in an attacking sense not laid a glove on Middlesbrough I think that'd be a big frustration for Ryan Lowe especially with the personnel that he's got at hand this evening three very attack-minded players, Keane essentially a centre-forward playing in a slightly withdrawn position, but unable to get the ball into him and Frocky are at the moment. So we're going Middlesbrough's way right now, Crooks. And for the first time, the final ball favours Freddie Woodman. Midway through the first half. Middlesbrough are enjoying themselves at the moment. That was a good chance for Whiteman to play forward there, and he's more than capable of doing so. And they were out of their shape. Crooks was really advanced in the 18-yard box there. Whiteman turns back, plays safe into, into Hughes, and the momentum has gone out in the move, and that's probably been the story of the opening 20-odd minutes for Preston North End. It's a case of risk and reward, I suppose, isn't it, at times? Yeah, and I think when you've got Obviously, two physical players up top tonight, and a league player in, in Frocchio. Try and get it into him. You can miss out that one, and, and Preston aren't scared to do that. Certainly, they can be quite direct and keen as much go into them, play forward quickly. You've got the targets up there for a reason. We haven't seen much of Will Keane as yet at all on the ball. We have seen goals elsewhere, though, tonight. All the games on the red button or on Sky Sports Football. Hull City three to the good against Rotherham United inside 21 minutes. Tyler Morton, Jaden Philogene, and Scott Twine. Lyndon Dyke's penalty has put Queen's Park Rangers ahead, and Norwich lead at Watford in the later kickoff. That's an eight o'clock start. Danny Butt with the goal for the Canaries. Rogers trying to find a way through, but he ended up bringing Jordan Story down, who got his body between man and ball. I think that's a little harsh. I'm not sure it was a foul on, on Rodgers, but both players' eyes on the ball just clattered into each other. It's a difficult one for the referee. I probably would have liked to see him just wave that one away. And that was a good opportunity for Middlesbrough. That was a poorly executed pass from Matt Crooks. Rodgers isolated up against Story. Only probably going to be one winner there. Crooks just got past a little bit of kilter and the opportunity goes begging. Getting there before us, Mayich, who's really imposed himself in recent games for Preston North End, but not able to do so as yet tonight. Ball bounces off Keane, the way of Morgan Rogers. And now Middlesbrough 
could be through again, Latila trying to find the angle for the strike. He has some support, Crooks is there! And just as he was about to pull the trigger, and then he found that he had company. That was a really nicely executed pass. This time, Rodgers gets the weight and the angle perfect. I think Liam Lindsay did well, actually, to come over, showed good pace to recover there. And then the centre-forward, Latilat, did pretty well, actually, which is good from that position. That's I think it was with a saving challenge. And that sets up a Middlesbrough corner, for which, of course, the imposing crooks will be very interested. Rodgers just trying to make a nuisance of himself. some questions and in it goes for two well it caused all kinds of problems for Preston North End and Ralph Vandenberg pops up to grab his first Middlesbrough goal they're starting to really impose themselves on the game now Middlesbrough and Preston North End have it all to do already I can understand the first goal, maybe, but you don't expect Preston to concede a goal from a set-piece with this ease. Vandenberg almost just chests it over the line, the delivery is brilliant, and you're going to get that from Barlas's right foot, we know that. Puts in such sumptuous deliveries after deliveries. Vandenberg just has to get something on the ball. I think the goalkeeper's got to come and be more aggressive there, Freddie Woodburn. It's only a couple of yards from his goal, he's got to come out there and make sure that he takes the pressure off his side. Middlesbrough absolutely cruising. One ball given against Latila. The first goal in Middlesbrough Pillars for Ralph Vandenberg, the 19-year-old. Free kick for Preston, Andrew Hughes bundled over. First goal I can understand, because Middlesbrough have got good technicians, and that's the way they play, they're nice and patient. Around the 18-yard box, but there, to be defended better, and the amount of times that Middlesbrough are getting in from little slid balls down the side, and Preston North End's back three. Expect them to be more solid, expect them to, to narrow those gaps and not allow Middlesbrough to be getting in so easily. and then by Jones. Preston North End need some sort of a spark here. And while looking for that spark, they need to keep Middlesbrough quiet. Problems at either end of the field for Ryan Lowe's side in this first half an hour or so. Header and the Berg clearance. North End, of course, had such a good start to the season 19 points taken from their first seven championship games. The best start to a season for 120 years. Came back to Potts. Rogers is just. Finding the gaps now, isn't he? Finding a way of ruffling some feathers back there. The story doesn't want to go up against him one-on-one. -on -one. He's been taken in field, almost into a centre-forward position. And it's been very problematic since the first whistle, really. Getting on the ball, getting turned, too much space, I think, in front of the Preston North End back three as well, which is surprising. And just thinking back to the weekend, Cardiff's late goals both coming from corners or second balls, deliveries from White, so that struck again tonight. Purse unable to defend their box late on the deep down at the weekend and again there from a the set piece. So and that one probably more than the, the first will hurt by low. It must take a fair bit to recover from the weekend from a Preston point of view. Here come Middlesbrough. Jones into the middle it went and Brad Potts was very cool under pressure the 
Ball's taken off best. Two in red, wait in the middle. Crooks looks for Matila. Rogers there as well. The pressure kept on by Dykstein. And now Jones. Barlas are involved as well, and Crooks. Rogers. Very nearly for Crooks. Now the breakaway led by Osmaic. Happy to take on McNair, who bites back and does really well to make sure he only gets the ball and not the man. Yeah, let off at one end because Rogers, in essence, is, is running the game even though his pass is poor. And that's what Osmaic can do. Getting them up the pitch, great athleticism. And McNair just does about enough to stay with him. Probably their best moment. Which sounds bizarre. Oz might show a little bit of athletics in down the left hand side. It's probably the closest we've come to a Preston chance. A little over half an hour in. An opportunity here to turn the tables on Middlesbrough a little. Potts is up there, story as well. Quicker strike didn't really have the power. And then the opportunity from Whiteman just didn't have the accuracy. Difficult one to control, I think, jumping around a little bit off the surface. Just about defend the first ball. Half attempt there from Procure and spinning all over the place. Whiteman just trying to feel that into the far corner. Best in on Dyke Steele. We talk about the mental impact of a defeat, such as the one at Deepdale at the weekend for Preston. 1-0 up, having played 95 and a half minutes, and all of a sudden, two quick-fire Cardiff City goals, and you leave with nothing. Physically as well, you know, playing with, with um, ten men for that length of time as well after Brady sending off, so... Sunday recovery day, Monday he just about getting his legs back really. Some of those players would have been tired, the ones that have played a lot of football, so travelling, tough game up at the Riverside, so that maybe is a factor mentally as well. Middlesbrough have certainly exploited that if there is a little bit of a weakness in this Preston mindset or physically. kick for North End here, whirled in by Best, away by Rogers as far as Brad Potts now. Rutkow's ball in, a loaded penalty area, but he picks out the one man he didn't want to. At least they've shown a little bit of intent, had the ball in the final third for a period, just to alleviate a bit of pressure. So, let me just know that they're in a game, a few moments ago it looked like we're going to create that third opportunity, get that third goal, and that really would be game over. So, just need to try and claw back a little bit of ascendancy in this game. Nothing silly at the back, all important from Woodman and Co. There, forward it goes again, looking for a combination of Keane and Zmajic. Palace's challenge. Best could have easily been a problem for Middlesbrough. Potts tried to keep it alive. And all the way back it goes to Freddie Woodman. Sudden, there are ten minutes to play before half time. A big ten minutes in the game, really, isn't it? Because if Middlesbrough were to get a third goal, it'd be hard to see Preston coming back from that. And if Ryan Lowe's side could pop up with something, sets up the second half beautifully. Bang 
Bittencourt. Richardson once again. That's a little casual. It's both sides of the, the game at the moment. I don't think they've got their, their press right, really. Preston has been able to navigate beyond them time and time again. Passing's been slick, and I think with the ball, we just saw an example a few moments ago, actually, a clip ball into Keane, he was able to get hold of it, win the free kick, got them up the pitch, not been able to get it into the front players on enough occasions in the first half. It's been very comfortable for Middlesbrough. Here they go again, Crooks setting up another attack for them. So many red shirts forward as well, but there were a fair few back in yellow as well. Yeah, just has to be careful here with this Monic right there with him. Rogers looking to find the angle to bend one. Barnas Rogers pokes it through and in it goes for three. Isaiah Jones at the double. And Millsborough are threatening to run away with things here. Well, I'm pleased that. Morgan Rogers is the architect because he's been the best player on the pitch. They've not been able to live with him. The positions have been taken up. Middlesbrough have just kept feeding him. I was desperate for the ball to go back to him there. He made a lovely little angle. Thinking surely a Preston North End player is going to recognise that he is dictating proceedings. But Barlasser, I think it was, just feeds him again. Rogers pokes it in field. Look, just runs off a Preston player. Whiteman it is on that occasion. That is poetry. It's a beautiful through ball. And it gets a wonderful finish from Isaiah Jones again. Maybe not someone you associate with being the best finisher, but my goodness me, that is a lovely, accomplished little chip. And what a night it's turning out to be for Isaiah Jones and for Middlesbrough as a collective. Too much for Preston to recover from already. Rogers, well, they're in again here. And it's Jones for the hat trick. And he just took a little too long. As very nearly did Preston in clearing it. Same combination, he just didn't sort his feet out, did he? Just tried to poke it beyond Woodman in the end. Ball got stuck under his feet when really more. A sure touch would have opened up the target. Vincent probably would have just stroked it with the inside of his foot. The end of something of a toe poke. Jones again. Don't steal involved, and this is Crooks and Barnasser. It's just a case of how many at the moment. Rogers tests Woodman from the angle. And Middlesbrough once again flow forward with end product. Again, I think this is a really clever attempt. Cooks plays him a little bit wide. And the option was to take the strike on him very nearly crept in the near post. And Best wins it back. Potts immediately loses out to Latila. Crooks moves it on. Isaiah Jones 
just trying to pull the tricks out. And that is a foul. Dan Barlas has had a, a few challenges now. A good attempt, that just whipped it towards the near post. It's his previous opportunity, fed by Rogers and. Yeah, I think that touch, the second one, just needed to get out of his feet a little bit. But Liam Lindsay actually got a little toe on the ball there and probably just did enough to put Jones off and get his hat-trick. Well, he will be loving watching his middles for side play this way. And the way they are bossing the midfield and sliding the balls through to those at the front. Reminiscent of him in his playing days. See from the position now that Rogers is in just to get back into his shape, but he's not playing out wide enough for Potts to go and engage him. And I just don't think Story wants to go into midfield. He doesn't want to get drawn out there. He's quite an old-fashioned type central defender. He wants to be up against people competing. So nobody has taken responsibility. And that last goal just showed White completely switched off. Rogers so easy to get beyond him. Way through for Potts. Tries his luck again here. And once again, he can't take off Bangura. Before tonight, Middlesbrough had only scored seven home league goals. And only Sheffield Wednesday and Queen's Park Rangers, who were obviously struggling at the foot of the table, had scored fewer goals on their own patch. Three in the bag before half time here tonight. Potts from Whiteman. Best. Lindsay all the way home. Trying to link up with Frukia. Best. A little route through towards goal, and his progress was unfairly halted. Shove just as best was possibly thinking about the strike. Yeah. As good as it's got for Preston North End, opportunity to strike goalwards. There are a couple interested, best being one of them, the other being Ben Whiteman. Yet really untested in the Middlesbrough goal. It was Whiteman. And it was hopeful. That's never likely to really concern the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. Shame because he's got great quality in that right foot. It's both the deep. The dead ball. Too much on it. It's going to be a busy half time for Ryan Lowe. Nobody that's on that substitute's bench will be sitting down comfortably at the moment because it could be any one of them that's on for this second half. I'm sure if Alan Brown was going to be intending to have a rest tonight, very likely that we'll probably see him at the interval, which is his importance to Ryan Lowe. There's Brown and Holmes, two of the regular starters who are on the bench Ched Evans started the last game having of course recently come back from seven months out that's actually how it's looking and kind of feeling that maybe that extra attacker if you like Keen, Trotler, that trio 
those players maybe be sacrificed just to add a little bit of steel and mouse. And then the game essentially has gone there, hasn't it? Really, in reality, it's a bit of a second half miracle from Preston North End, but that's the type of thing you'll be wrestling with now. Do we almost declare, or do we have to remain? Attacking was possibly the setup has been a try go searching for goals. And the first of four added minutes. Yeah. Towards Crooks. Just couldn't quite take the pace off the ball enough. Back still on to Crooks again. Certainly played his part in the first half. Clever player, versatile. Actually, years ago, he played as a holding midfield, a lovely range of passing. Seems to be getting further and further up the pitch as he his career wears on. Easy with the header away. Rogers looks to keep the pressure on. Jones, well repelled in the end by those in yellow. Zvajic though all alone amongst five red shirts. from this Preston side in the first half is composure. Anderson just running out of play. He won't be shy in his team talk. He feels that certain players need to step up. so far in the main as a collective pretty good on the weekend the circumstances went against them but was pretty satisfied with the overall performance this has been way off right now stopped by Bangura was in their team as well should have been able to Press the ball up the pitch a little bit better than they have done in the first half, undoubtedly. This could be a big problem for them. A player who's been influential for them in recent weeks, Nicholas Majic. Just seemed to pull up off the ball. Quality. There's been a, a couple of almost clearances from Preston defenders which have really got him in on goal. Which had great athleticism down the left hand side a couple of times where Paddy McNair had to be really bright to just clear up the danger. So I don't think they've got anyone with any Reese still missing with this similar profile in essence. Chen Evans, yes, sent similar physique, physique but not a runner stage of his career, someone who's going to be neat and tidy with his back to goal, but his mind clearly brings up something different. Not a first half that the Preston North End hierarchy would have enjoyed, Peter Ridsdale included in that, of course. We're in added time, in added time now. Ryan, though, will 
concerned about with it for those match. Having in mind the challenge of Queen's Park Rangers presents itself on Friday live with us from Deepdale. Queen's Park Rangers will look to challenge the North End a bit more than the challenge some this season, albeit currently level with Stoke City. A very one-sided first half here at the Riverside. It has been all Middlesbrough, and they have really enjoyed themselves against Preston North End in this first half. Isaiah Jones right at the heart of it with a couple of goals. Ralph Vandenberg getting his first in Middlesbrough colours as well. It's a very happy Middlesbrough dressing room, you'd imagine, at half-time. But plenty to talk about in the Preston changing room and plenty to change in the second half. Half-time, Middlesbrough three. Preston North End nil. Between Cardiff City and West Brom. Coventry City and Plymouth Argyle likewise the first championship meeting between those two for 13 and a half years. Goals from Tyler Morton, Jaden Fergin and Scott Twine have given Hull City a 3-0 lead at the break. Rotherham United without a win in the last 21 away league games and it doesn't look good for them tonight either. 3-0 also here at the Riverside and it is one apiece between Queen's Park Rangers, Preston's next opponents incidentally on Friday night live with us against Stoke City. QPI who haven't won in 12 home league games, their longest run without a home win in their history. And Watford and Norwich City are 2-2 at the break. Halftime whistle's just gone there. Norwich City were two goals up through Danny Bart and Huang Yu Zhou, the loanee from Nottingham Forest. But two goals in three minutes from Watford. Kone and Rajevic have drawn the game level. And that game currently on Sky Sports Football. And we're set and ready to go again here. of changes which we'll tell you about in a moment. Preston North End start us in the second half. The last meeting between these two sides here ended in a comfortable Middlesbrough win by four goals to nil. In March, Tuber Acton, Cameron Archer with a couple and Marcus Force on target that day. Preston North End had Bambo Diaby sent off in that game. And Middlesbrough with a three-goal cushion as we start the second half. So plenty for Ryan Lowe to talk about at the break. I wonder what he's changed, Sam. I'm sure it was a really difficult 15 minutes, probably one of the hardest of the season so far. Clearly hindered a little bit towards the tail end of that first half. Chad Evans gets an opportunity and um, Beacon reproduces form of last year. Possibly Preston have still got a hope of salvaging something this evening. Preston debut for Calvin Ramsey. Story. And Potts to Whiteman. And now Hughes. Best in support. Karen Evans waiting in the middle. Just got away from Ledson. Best. Manages to dig one out, looking for Evans, and it bounced unkindly, perhaps, for Bangura. He certainly didn't quite get the body in the right position. An encouraging start. Really nice ball in from Best from the left-hand side. He's pushed a lot higher up the left-hand side. Looks like there's definitely been a, a change in the shape. Hughes probably at left back now, allowing Best to essentially be in a left wing position, opening part of this second half. So a couple of changes, tweaks in formation, needs must for Ryan Lowe. The corner though is not a good one. Easily fended away by Matila. Not the kind of manager to give up easily. He's made his tweaks in personnel and tactical changes as well. Looking to try and get that next goal, which is all important.
Lindsay. Ramsey. Whiteman. And from Fukia. Taken on by Potts. Lots of room for Kean Best. He takes on the strike, which could have gone anywhere. Morgan Rogers back there to try and steer it clear. It's had the immediate effect, hasn't it? A few changes at half time. Best in particular, raiding down that left hand side, and that's an, an excellent attempt. Cross shot. That's good power on it. Could have gone anywhere. Well dealt with in the end by Rogers back there. comes the corner, Dieng was there, but it wasn't convincing. No way past Ramsey for Jones. This is Evans now. Hoisted high, Whiteman getting involved, Potts as well. So congested, and Johnny Housen comes through the crowd. Jones chased by Best. to Woodman. Best. Trying to keep the wall ball away from Dykesteel and Barlasse. Housen won by a few thousand to speed up. Given away by Barlasse this time to Potts. Fokia makes the run, Evans as well. He didn't get the warning he wanted. And Bangura is right there with him. Just about able to get back into a, a decent defensive position there. Bangura's Potts broke towards the Middlesbrough goal. Just got something on the ball. It's just remonstrating with the official. So ago, he felt that was a free kick, nothing given, but it's a much improved performance already. Only eight minutes into the second half, but Preston definitely compressing the game a little bit more. That back line is engaging, being a bit more aggressive, and there's more forward options, partly because of the position of best there on the ball and pop to in more advanced roles now. Attila. Goes to Dyke Steel. Housen. Isaiah Jones. Room for Crooks who searched out Housen and, and room for the strike from Morgan Rogers. Beaten away by Freddie Woodman. Lovely stuff again. The space that he's at afforded on the edge of the 18-yard box is alarming once more though Crooks and Johnny Housen with the approach play I think he can even take a touch there maybe maybe just steady himself be possibly even more deliberate with his strike it's a good stop Preston North End just haven't worked out how to keep him quiet well that's his corner Luckily for him, he had a second chance to get hold of the ball. He doesn't go much better either. Ramsey steps in, he wants to win the 50-50, and he has won the throw as well. A player that Preston fans have been itching to see. Two appearances for Liverpool last season. Ryan Lowe's really had to wait to be able to throw him into the Preston mix. Signed in the summer on a season-long loan. A little too much said, perhaps, here by Mads Frukia and also Matt Crooks.
Vandenberg. A gift for Frukia. Does Ray Walters squirm away from Dijksteel, but Vandenberg right there standing strong. The Hodges header. Crooks is on the march through the middle. Instead, it goes the way of Bangura. Story in hot pursuit. And catching practice for Freddie Woodman. Game is kind of flipped now. Middlesbrough playing on the counter attack. They've got good mobility, good pace to be able to do so. Calculated here by Bangura down the left hand side, able to get into a good crossing position. And it's Preston probably who have been a little bit more deliberate almost and a bit more of the possession to this point they're still up unable to arm um, as brave and then and get that really good opportunity on their goal well before tonight Middlesbrough had scored first in seven matches in the championship this season and had remained unbeaten in those seven matches Commanding three goal lead at the break means they don't really have to push for more But I'm sure the majority in the stands would love to see plenty more from those in red Zai Jones on the hunt For more and for a hat-trick on a personal level Clipped in by Barnassa, but with no takers in the middle a Cute little ball. I think it's clever Just a breakdown in communication between him and the centre forward I'll tell you that He's expecting it to be just played into his feet, joined with the approach play. Arlas is so inventive, can do absolutely everything with that right foot. I think that's a clever ball. He'll be disappointed that there's no takers. Dan Barlas hasn't scored for Middlesbrough as yet. He's been at the club for coming on for a year, signed in January from Rotherham. Certainly a player who has the ability to create or to step up and hit them from range as he did in his days at the New York Stadium and that is just about reeled in by Andrew Hughes who did very well under pressure if Middlesbrough are presented with a fourth then it would be game over from here away it breaks though in favor of Isaiah Jones took two to stop him and has the ball Keen best is on the ground here holding his head as well Jones run needed stop really they were in business there Middlesbrough when they broke Andrew Hughes was caught miles up the pitch so best combination of him that's nothing it is that came steaming in had to kind of caught the uh, driving run of Jones just come away with an injury just got covered by his own man I think there Just a reminder, tomorrow's main live game with us on Sky Sports Football comes from Portman Road as Ipswich Town take on Millwall. 7.30 start for that, with all other championship fixtures live with commentary by the red button. Friday, we're with Preston again as they host struggling Queen's Park Rangers, again from 7.30 Sky Sports Football. And Saturday is a midday start at the Hawthorns. An intriguing match at this as West Bromwich Albion face tabletop as Leicester City. 
lots to come in the days ahead and of course the weeks and months ahead as well <laughs> 15 minutes into this second half and no change to the half-time score Thumbs up given to Kean Best there. It's been a big part of the improvement, I would say. 15 minutes in, and, and yes, still waiting for those opportunities to materialise, but purposeful. I would probably say the first 15 minutes, definitely more aggressive. In his position, Best a lot higher on the left hand side, give him a little bit more of an outlet on that side. He's been pretty positive when he's had the ball. They've improved, but need a goal during this spell, I suppose, to yeah, just make it a difficult proposition for Middlewood to get over the line. McNair just gets to the ball first, hoists it long for Latela. Right by Woodman. Ledson. James unable to make anything out of that. Change is afoot. Preston North End, Ben Woodburn. He's waiting to call him try and produce some creativity to change the course of this game. Foul by Lindsay. Full-blooded challenge, let's say. He's done well, Latila, I would say, this role. Down against, in the first half, three very uncompromising central defenders. Just up against the two now, invariably, but as good as he's got. McNair. Housen. Bangura. Rogers just ahead of him. Preston would like to make the change now, I think. Ben Woodburn is all set and ready to go. This Kean Best, who was injured moments ago, who makes way. That a player like that, Kian Best, is just 18 years of age. Someone who's done terrifically well this season so far. Ben Woodburn comes on. Brad Potts straight into the challenge there. And the yellow card, the first of the night indeed for the Preston man, and that is a problem for him because that means he will miss the Queen's Park Rangers game on Friday night. It's clear he gets a lot of the ball, and it's the follow-through. I think he's fortunate, and I thought it at first viewing. I think that's high. It's reckless. I think he's a lucky boy. You can probably tell from his reaction as well that he knows he's caught the player, and he's caught the player quite high. So, some adjustment in personnel will be required for the visitor Queen's Park Rangers. Does it get any better? There. Unfortunately, he's escaped an injury here. Well, Potts had played and still has played every championship minute of the season so far. Middlesbrough are planning 
a change or perhaps changes Sam Silvera first to get set Seemingly okay to carry on, but he'll have to wait before he can be reintroduced. Story's header. Woodburn had it and then lost it. As did Jones. Roll from Crooks to set Jones away. What's he got in his mind here? He's looking for Crooks again. And he, as you can see, is so frustrated with what he produced in the end. It's difficult when you're that close in, I think, to kind of stand one up towards the far post. He, he had to go with a strong side foot and try and pick out a teammate. That makes it hard to wrap your right foot around the ball too straight into Woodman's grasp. We go back to Hughes. Slip this from Vandenberg. And they're restored to the action. The end just making Barlas's heart skip a little faster, perhaps. Definitely engaged a little bit earlier. Preston North End, in essence, had an extra four player here. Potts pushed on. Crocchio on the left-hand side now. Woodburn almost in the number 10 position, so there's four of them that can go hunting. Middlesbrough are going to try and play out, and that little squeeze has nearly had to Preston nicking it high. Middles for free kick and a double change in the offing too. Silvera and Sam Greenwood will be introduced in a moment. Rogers. The changes will come now. And it's Isaiah Jones, who won't get a hat-trick tonight, but he's certainly made a telling contribution. Really a good night for him. This is what you want to see from Isaiah Jones. His marker just seeing his number on the back of his shirt, running towards the opponent's goal. And uh, getting the second, and this was the tick of the bunch for me. Beautiful from Barlasa. Morgan Rogers in town. He's got a wonderful finish. Really nice composure shown by Isaiah Jones on a couple of occasions. And two of the stars of the first half. Given an early rest in the second. 20 minutes to play. And those two can enjoy those minutes from the side. Silvera and Greenwood on as able deputies. with four goals to his name this season. Some that have really caught the eye. A beautiful free kick against Leicester City being one of them. Ledson. Potts back for Ramsey. Yeah, right in the way of that one. And the strike from Frockyard. An easy one rolling all the way to Dieng. For the first time we've seen 
And he's been approaching an attempt. Frocchiari has been on the periphery of the game throughout, but on the left hand side now. He's coming in field. He's got caught by Crooks, I think. Able to get a little bit of pressure on the board and stop that from going goalwards. seeing a bit of style from Preston we're also used to seeing a little bit of steel from them really we've not seen too much of either tonight which will disappoint Ryan Lowe he always wants his side to show character as well as quality Woodburn for Whiteman story has to go back to Lindsay Evans Look out for Woodburn Middlesbrough successfully squeezing Preston all the way home Be Dyke steals. Questionable amount of control uh, of contact there, I think, but they're good at that. Some fullbacks aren't they? Running back towards their own goal, affected the art. I don't think Brockyard does anything here, really. Better idea here. Not sure if there's any contact at all. Still winning the foul. They've shown a bit more, haven't they? Press the North End, I think. Just having more forward players, more options for the, the defenders to hit, really, when they're playing out. They've had guys in closer proximity, a little bit more urgency, but it's not amounted to, to opportunities. And it's the hardest part of the game, really. It's getting the final third, creating and taking the chances. So it's probably got something of a reaction. Right now, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to at least give Middlesbrough something to sweat about in the second half. Those in red are looking to build here to try and get another one on the board. Thanks, Steel, to throw. And from House, a little bit lucky squeezing it through the gap for Silvera. Nicely done that time, though. Bancura. Was the ball taken or not? The verdict is no. Fair to say Ryan Ledson doesn't agree. And this is an intriguing situation for Middlesbrough. It's really nice feet, I think, from Silvera in the end. Nice from Greenwood. Infield, Bangura on the overlap. Worked infield to Silvera. Lovely football. To toe on the ball. He's got a case, Ledson. He said what you said, but in slightly different words. And now Greenwood and Barlasa will weigh up what to do with this Middlesbrough free kick. Greenwood who hits it. And the wall stood strong. Really stink through it, didn't it? Couldn't get it over and probably down in time. Yeah, big wall as well, isn't it? Two Preston North End defenders in that line, just able to get deflection, I think, of Lindsay. He scored an absolute beauty from that range a few games ago. Just corner Woodman was there, but wasn't there. He felt the reason he didn't claim it was that he was impeded. So uh, Greenwood on this occasion just backing in. Yeah, the tug of the shirt there. That one is a foul on Woodman. 
I think he probably remonstrates a little bit more exuberantly because of the goal that was given away in the first half. He felt that more than Rodgers was fouling him. That definitely was an infringement there. Here comes another tester. Crooks was right there. Woodman got a fist to it. 100% something that they've identified as a weakness. Four now, I think, that Middlesbrough have put right underneath the crossbar, just about pressing North End able to clear their lines on that occasion. Dax Steele. 14 minutes to play, plus whatever's added. Not a second half which has come to life as yet, really. The North End needed to do so. We'll get there and get there with a bit of style. Hughes. Defending to do. Silvera. Options right and left. It's Greenwood. And it seemed destined to at least hit the target, if not find the bottom corner. And that's the risk now as Preston pull bodies, bodies forward with two substitutes out wide for, for Middlesbrough now. Fresh. They're going to exploit that space that's left. It was Hughes that was caught up the pitch there. Greenwood would have known when the ball was travelling towards him. Two touches, good first one, get the strike away, but Liam Lindsay looking to it. He's McNair. Palace. Dyke Steele. Silvera trying to find the room ahead of him. Crooks now. Free kick for the hosts. Nelson. Changes the pace, finds Latila, and he finds Woodman in the way. Really good movement. Now, I'm not encouraging it, but there's a little tug on the shirt there. I think if he goes down, it's going to be one outcome. Wonderful pass from Johnny Housen. A little tug from him, Lindsay. Just tried to pull his hand away as quickly as possible. To look as innocent as possible. Well, the result is a corner rather than anything more for Middlesbrough. Balassa. Silvera. Crooks. Neatly found. Silvera for Housen. It's lovely to watch from Middlesbrough until the very end. It really is a lovely sight when they're making little angles, nice intricate football, appreciation of pass for their teammates. Capsulated by the first goal tonight, really. This is the Greenwood effort. And he does really well. Whiteman's there as well, in any case, just to make sure that he's still able to get a block on that attempt. He's had to put some last-ditch blocks in tonight. And of course, he had that great last-minute moment at Ewood Park recently for Preston North End. Just a couple of weeks back, scoring that late winner. Hughes. Attacked by Vandenberg. 
Crooks will get to that. It's taken down by Hughes. And he gets a yellow card, I think, maybe for the applause as much as the challenge. Last ball, as has Paddy McNair. Matt Clark on in McNair's place. A player who's played so little football in recent times through injury issues. time he played for Middlesbrough the 1st of October 2022 well over a year without kicking a ball it's good to see Clark back in action we have the last eight minutes plus added time here Presumably now be a consolation. And Middlesbrough stretch their advantage further. Time ticking away as Ramsey looks to take on Bangura. Moved on by Whiteman. Vandenberg away, and here's Clark. Career obviously hit by injury, but gives you that balance as well. Left footer, very good on the ball. And that's an this Middlesbrough side, no question, especially down in numbers in that regard. Plenty of experience in his career, and not just experience, but of playing very well at the clubs he's been at. A couple of player of the year awards in his career, Brighton and Derby County, of course. His most recent clubs. I remember there been an attempt at St. Yang's goal. That's what Ryan Lowe has to unlock in essence. Yes, they haven't defended well collectively tonight, but the numbers don't lie at the moment. They are creating next to nothing, not having enough shots. Thankfully. Amazingly clinical so far this season. So many games in terms of the goals they have been scoring, but I think it's coming to roost now. And that has been evident tonight. Not enough to intent whatsoever. Dyke steals. Header. It's Gilbert getting stuck in. He will be pleased to get some more minutes under his belt. He's only played a total of 25 minutes before tonight as a substitute for Middlesbrough. Charging on, and trying to thump in a Middlesbrough fourth. Yeah. 
Housen. And from Greenwood. Vandenberg for Dykstier. Now Silvera. Greenwood, Gilbert maybe. Just found that he had two to try and beat. A lovely pass. It's been in that back line down the side of Preston. Greenwood putting so much pace on that. Makes it easy for substitute Gilbert to collect, but it had to be inch perfect and his touch just got away from him and able to recover. A change for Middlesbrough here, which will be a big one for 17 year old Law McKay on for his Middlesbrough debut. Replacing one of the more experienced players on the field in Johnny Housen as well. Preston North End replaced Ryan Ledson with Leighton Stewart. His third substitute appearance in the championship this season. Gilbert's touch. Matt Clark with a thundering header. Information of the double Preston change. Andrew Hughes feeling the effects of that last clash. The only consolation for Preston North End out of tonight, and it is not much of a consolation, but the next game is only literally a few days away, Friday night. Queen's Park Rangers come to Deepdale. A chance to get this defeat out of their system within just a few days. Middlesbrough go to Leeds on Saturday before a home game against Ipswich Town. And then Hull City come here. Shortly after, Steve Gibson will be quite happy with the night's work, I think, in general. Though, of course, anyone of a middle persuasion would love more goals to have come after the break. So often this is the pattern that the second half takes when it's been so one-sided in the opening 45 minutes. Middlesbrough haven't really had to get out of third gear. It's got to be said in this second half. Just the marginal improvement, I would say. Certainly in terms of the endeavour, but not enough to cause Middlesbrough anywhere near enough problem on their own goal. Resume for Ryan Lowe ahead of that game against QPR, which comes an important one now at the start of what is quite a winnable run of games for them. If the fans can take any solace, I suppose, in the wake of this defeat, after a really hellish run for them, becomes slightly more forgiving. Middlesbrough, on the other hand, as I said, a tough few weeks ahead for them. Well, Queen's Park Rangers, incidentally, are heading for a victory, a rare victory. Against Stoke City. So they might well be buoyed by that when they visit Deepdale. A minimum of five added minutes here. We've had 30 seconds or so of that time.
open away from Lindsay. just away from him as he was thinking of taking aim and that cross has just taken off Silvera will clear and feed Gilbert opportunity to give younger players a, a game some minutes Josh Coburn on the bench for the entirety of the team so he'll be fresh and to play a part if required it and needs I'm sure probably in the planning just to give him a little bit of a rest maybe over these two games or opportunity to do that and more so yeah it's 10 out of 10 for my character almost the right of the time here's Clark Balasa has it now Gilbert and for Barca. Clark Silvera. Greenwood moves it on. Not enough, wants it in the middle. Instead, it's in. It's Bangura who puts the seal on a terrific night for Middlesbrough. They have been so sharp tonight. All the hard work done in the first half and the gloss put on the scoreline in the second. I think it actually emphasises what's caused Preston problems throughout the evening here. Silvera and Greenwood coming in field, saturating that kind of area of the pitch. And I'm not sure how that's gone in. Is Freddie Woodman unsighted to a player in his, his eye line as this is struck on Bangura's weaker side, right-footed. I don't think that should go in, but it's a great moment for him. Only one of few appearances. Capture five night. First Middlesbrough goal for Alex Bangura. Only his second championship start. He has not only enjoyed himself tonight, but he's played well in that role. He's been part of a Middlesbrough team which has kept Preston North End very much at arm's length. Just as the last time they met here, Middlesbrough emerged victorious by four goals to nil. Borough back on track after defeat, back at the table, right into the mix beneath the top six. It is job done for Michael Carrick and co, who really won the points in the first half and just managed to stretch their advantage in the second. Preston just found it so hard to get going in that first half, so hard to keep Middlesbrough and Morgan Rogers and Isaiah Jones quiet. They will look to go again against Queen's Park Rangers on Friday night. But tonight is Middlesbrough's night. They win comfortably by four goals to nil.